Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, goodness gracious, Toronto really cashed in on the heat wave that was WWE this weekend. Money in the Bank is over, NXT heat wave is over, and we have a lot of news that you can see or maybe in just a couple of years won't be able to see anymore. So sit back, relax, and oh yeah, Kay has some big news as well. Uh, It is Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 383. The time is all legal exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio, and it starts right now. God, it's so fucking hot. I'm so glad I stayed inside most of the weekend. I I, I, I can definitely see you right now. They can't see you, but they will be in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 383. Uh, the time is all ego. As much as an ego as this person trying to spam us on Twitch right now, I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys uh, for joining us. If you like what you're listening to or what you're, what you're hearing at the moment, please like, share, subscribe. The links to all of that are in the description below. Money in the Bank and NXT Heat Wave were both phenomenal events happening over up in the Great White North in Toronto that we're spending pretty much the entire, entire show talking about it and the fallout. And before we get to that, let's bring it over to Mr. Will Tarasak. How are you doing today, sir? To my childhood is, well, yeah, my, my, my teenage years are over of loving John Cena because I didn't watch wrestling when I was a child. But yeah, <laughs> right, John you Cena. <laughs> You know, when when I saw him come out, I was like, what the fuck is Cena doing here? And then I saw his towel. I'm like, he's not retiring in Toronto. He can't. <laughs> and then he's not. It's just going to be a fucking year-long retirement. Year tour. and a half. It's, it's never it's never been done before. It's something interesting, and it's very John Cena. I can't wait to fancy book the shit out of that. <laughs> right, K. Murphy? Who is his final opponent? Don't tell me. I want to hear your news. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about John Cena until we get to the John Cena segment. But, K., I believe... Uh, that you have some big news that you want to share with the world that we've been holding back for the last two weeks <laughs> at this point. All righty. So also I welcome back. By the way. Am- thank you. Thank you. I have not been here in a minute. I wanted to let you all know that I officially will not be coming to Las Vegas for WrestleMania. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. That was we- not the news we agreed on. <laughs> yeah. What? Because I'm getting married, bitch. <laughs> You get married in Vegas. Hey, you're getting you're getting you're getting you're gonna <laughs> get married uh, Easter Easter weekend. You're gonna get married on Easter, Easter weekend. weekend and 420. No, no. Oh my amazing. Oh god. You know no, what? I I'm love not, it. I am not getting married on 420. Um, but I am going to be planning a wedding, so I have to save money. Oh that makes way more sense. Can you can you, can you fly <laughs> yeah, Vegas, again? Vegas is gonna be very expensive. I would not pay for a wedding in Las yeah. Vegas for man to see <laughs> more either. <laughs> Absolutely not. Like, no, no, no. Weddings are expensive. Weddings in New York City are stupid expensive. Yeah, they are. Like, so okay. I'll, okay, I'll tell you um, what we're thinking of doing in the uh, when we're off air. What 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 Jazz and I are thinking uh, of what we're thinking of doing oh, in, for, oh, like, oh, in terms of a wedding and cutting oh, costs and doing. Oh, there's a thought then in, involved in that. Very interesting. Okay, let's see that hardware again. I want, I want, I want, you yes, see I want it? to see it. Okay, it's very pretty. Yeah, it's very that's nice an awesome ring. It's ring. Very, it's Congratulations, K Fave. Yeah, thank, thank you. It's a coffin shape. And you got your nails done for the show too. I like that as well. <laughs> it, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. My first I'm reaction was, "God damn it, they beat me." <laughs> <laughs> so I had my. I literally panicked about my nails for weeks, like the entire month of June, because I was suspicious that we were getting. They look engaged. great. I like. I like your nails too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, Juan does have a point. You did put it on your Instagram story. Yes, I did put it on my Instagram story, but I still didn't put it on the show. Yeah, yeah. We thought we were going to um, have the exclusive, so we kept it quiet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, I still wanted to be the one to deliver the news myself. Yeah, so the, let's hear, let's hear the whole story. By the way, this is this is the this is the you show right now. All right. Okay, okay, okay. So it was the last weekend of June, and that was the weekend of New York City Pride. So the sad the day before the 29th, Astoria Park had a pride like picnic going on all day. So there was performers, it was like live drag, people were singing. So like people like brought blankets and like tables and just kind of sat and chilled. So like we went with a bunch of our friends and like we got sandwiches, like we were all set up to go. So we had Boris with us. 
so about an hour before it happened, um, I went in Liv's bag and I found the ring by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so Liv, like, keep it in your pocket. Seriously. You always keep it in your pocket. No, 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 because you can also see the ring box through the shorts that she was wearing, which like no, so again, you can't, you can't, I yeah, thought. Right, yeah. So I miss right, Liv, you get some slack. <laughs> So she had tried to hide the ring in the bag, like the ring box in the bag. And then I guess her pocketbook got jostled. So it ended up being like the tippy top of the bag. Yeah. So I misunderstood. I was looking for treats for Boris and I went in her bag instead of like the tote bag. And I just saw it and everyone watched me see it because all my friends knew. Like everyone knew that it was happening. But me, except I was suspicious the whole time anyway. Which is why I went literally the day before I went and got my nails done. I don't get my nails done, but I went because I wasn't going to show up unprepared. So I found the ring. Everyone watches that sees me find the ring and I just close the bag and I don't say anything. I just go sit down and I'm like, I'm going to wait. Just sit stone faced while watching a concert. <laughs> That's quite literally. I literally just close the bag. I sit down and I just I'm like, I'm going to watch this nice drag performance. <laughs> <laughs> and I hit my babe until it's time. So about an hour later, Liv comes up to me and she's like, do you want to take Boris on a walk with me? He's getting antsy. And my friend Danielle's like, I'll come with you. I want to get ice cream because there's an ice cream truck by the water. Oh, this is planned out really well, and, uh, actually, besides the fact that you found the ring. <laughs> so I was like, and I'm like, yeah, of course. And then I like, as I'm getting, I'm sitting, Liv is standing and I see a rectangle sized box in the pocket of her shorts. And I'm like, okay, it's happening right now. So I like knew. <coughs> So we're walking towards the water and the water by a story in Astoria Park by like the bridge and stuff is where we had our first kiss. So we're over there mm. and Danielle's like, let me, so we had Boris and she's like, let me take family pride photos of you guys. So she took a bunch oh, of like the I two of us that. and Boris. And then she's like, give me Boris. I want to get pictures of the two of you. So nice. Liv tries to put me on the left side and I like being on my right side in pictures. So I'm like, I'm going to go here. And she's like, no. If you have to be on this side, I'm like, yeah. So meanwhile, I'm next to the ring. I feel it. <laughs> and to be annoying, I need it to be annoying in the moment. And I'm like, why do you keep going into your pocket? My God. Uh, and then, <laughs> Damn it, Kay. I knew. Like, I needed to, like, make a joke uh, because I think I probably would have combusted in the moment. And then, yeah, she got down and on one knee and my friends were in the grass watching and I said yes and chaperone started playing it was very gay very perfect <laughs> amazing I, I awesome. love that story I love I Thank love how you. your friends were hiding in the bushes like they couldn't be seen because that would have been Will and I <laughs> like does she see oh, does yeah. she see oh yeah like, no, like, you, know, you know how on Raw like JD yeah. McDonough and Balor stuck their head out yeah. that would have been <laughs> so in Astoria Park there's like there's like the grass and like the you know park, yeah. and then there's like a like a like a bike like a bike lane like walking trail like a walking path, and then there's like the water. So my friends are like posted up on the grass, except for my one friend has to be back by our stuff because we brought like a folding table with like snacks and like stuff to set up. Like my friend brought no, like my one friend brought a bunch of desserts to celebrate the engagement because like everyone knew. <laughs> And because I was suspicious, I last minute the week before Pride, I bought an all white outfit for Pride. So when we went to New York City Pride the next day, we both wore white. Beautiful. And it was really fun. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Like, it was so great. Like my parents like were on the phone, like waiting basically for it to happen. So like, everyone's very excited. We're so excited. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I can't. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, it's gonna. I'm so. Stoked. It's gonna be so it's much gonna fun. A... Now I just gotta fucking plan this. Thing. Yeah, take your time with it. There's no rush. <coughs> yeah, we're hoping for next year, but like, I'm not confident. Mm. Just give. Just but we will see. Give Will and I the right to uh, podcast through the wedding reception. Oh my god! <laughs> just do a live. I don't even know. Live, live stream through that the wedding alive. reception. Yeah. I'll bring my backdrop. You know I will. I would say you could take brief videos. I wouldn't do a full show. <laughs> we'll just we'll bring in interviews of everybody in the bridal party. <laughs> you imagine. 
<laughs> well, jazz, hold the light. <laughs> oh, you guys could be like my content creators for the wedding. <laughs> we could, to be honest. Because apparently people do that. What, create content? Apparently, pe- no, apparently like people hire con- content creators for their wedding specifically to hold on to the bride's phone and like film TikToks and shit. Oh, oh that's, that's pretty interesting. Well, you got to come up with a nifty hashtag and then we'll, we'll work from there. Yeah. I, that's the thing. I don't want to do a wedding hashtag. I feel like it's played out. Fair. Fair. Like, we live for we we live for K. <laughs> you only you only love <laughs> K. <laughs> I like you only love K. That's just me. Also, everybody in the chat wants a KOTR watch along of your wedding. <laughs> oh my god! Let's <laughs> be like making making pretzels. Yeah. Like yes, <laughs> Taquano. Taquano be talking shit the whole time, and we won't be able to show any of his responses. Taquano is like down in front, <laughs> down <laughs> in <laughs> front. <laughs> Oh my god, Taquan will like virtually object and we'll just have to like block him from the stream. <laughs> the slap will be blocked from the wedding. <laughs> yeah, fucking slack. Now we're also that that's the hashtag. <laughs> Fuck you. <slack. laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks it's a jaded X. No, it's just a dude from Canada listening. <laughs> <laughs> Rents is confirmed wedding pretzels. Charles wants exclusive merch for the weddings. <laughs> Stop. I am probably going to do a lot of, like, the designing. Like, I'm starting to work on, for, like, my, like, like wedding party and stuff. Like, I worked on some, like, design stuff. I would love to do my own invitations if possible. Like, Wait, quick, quick sideberg. Kay, did you listen to our episode with Slack? No, I didn't. You you should, because his his takes about AEW were well, so you correct. Saw the clip I, you saw the clip I used for about when he talked about Moxley, right? No. Oh, he pretty much said. I've been busy. Long story short. <laughs> long story short. One, it's on all of our socials. Number two, uh, he pretty much says that John Moxley tries too hard to le- to make everybody forget that he was ever Dean Ambrose. You know what? <laughs> that's a hundred percent correct. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and that's just, that's just the beginning, Kay. Like he just went on and on and on and on, and every single time, I was more shocked how correct yeah, we, he had was. Sla- Chris, we had Slack. And Wild, we had Slack and Mr. Wild. We had Slack and Mr. Wild be on. All right, I'll have to catch up on. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about. It's, it's so aggressive. We'll, we'll talk about it's the potential so of of upgrading Slack to our AEW correspondent because honestly, we kind of need. I one. want him on every single AEW review show because <laughs> his hot takes are just exactly what I need on a Tuesday yeah. night. Honestly, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, so it'll be up. It'll be up for discussion. Right. We'll figure it out. Uh, anywho, let's talk about. If we if remember. remember, it's also true. If it could be another 18 months if we fucking forget. <laughs> anyway, folks, let's get into some big news of the week going on in the world of uh, pro wrestling, specifically WWE, and breaking news from this morning. Uh, we all woke up to the fact that Joe Tessitore, a famed boxing and college <laughs> football announcer for ESPN, has also officially been hired for WWE. He is going to be part of the uh, three-man booth. He's going to be a part of a new three-man booth for SmackDown. So it's going to be Joe Tessitore, uh, with Wade Barrett um, and Corey Graves on SmackDown. Uh, he has a lot of experience. He's a big WWE fan. He grew up in upstate New York. One more for the good guys, obviously, uh, watching Bad Backlund. He goes to a bunch of WWE events. He's also, for the past three years uh, on ESPN, been leading the coverage for WrestleMania. So this seems like a no-brainer hire uh, for, for WWE. But Will Tarasak, do you know anything about Mr. Joe Tessitore? I don't. I don't know anything about this guy, um, but this hasn't worked well for WWE in the past. Fair. Using professional professional broadcasts, professional sports broadcasters, and making Aww. them WWE mm-hmm. commentators. Like Pat McAfee was never a broadcaster, right? He's, He's just, just a, a character. character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but but you think of what Jimmy Smith was that? His Jimmy name? Smith did fine. I think he got. I thought Jimmy Smith got cut really early. Yeah, he didn't do bad, but he wasn't... He was forgettable. He wasn't a character. You know, uh, Morrow is the closest thing to making a, like a traditional sports broadcaster coming in to do wrestling. Morrow was yeah, the closest. And Ra- was it? And Mike Adam Lee, you know, had health problems. We didn't know until years later, so he gets a pass. It was the other but, guy, uh, Vic I mean, something, that started the last, like... Vic Joseph? No, no, no. Not Vic it Joseph. Was, uh, he's, he's a baseball announcer that they tried. Yeah. Like, he's like... it. 
I felt I bad for because like he tried, but he just couldn't get it. Because the the key the key to being a WWE commentator is you still need yeah. a character. Yeah. Which is weird. Like you you get over by having a character. Jr. is this or dude from the south. Jerry the King was a pervert. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, Corey Graves has JBL's a, moments. JBL's a JBL. douche. Ad, Adnan, uh, Adnan, Adnan Verk. Adnan, Adnan Verk, Ad, yeah. yeah, he was yeah. not good. But even Beth Phoenix, Beth Phoenix was, pretty, Beth. Was, was really good I on like NXT. Beth. I like Beth Phoenix yeah. a lot on NXT. Taz, Mike Adamley, he's the analyst, yeah. right? So like, Tony Schiavone, he's just a goofball. <laughs> like everyone has that. Excalibur, he's really good at promo yeah, he, work. And he, wore, and he wears a mask. <laughs> so, yeah. He wears a mask. So can this guy do that? I think it helps that he's a fan, so he mm-hmm. knows what to do. And he's he's on there with who? Corey Graves yeah. and Wade Barrett? Mm-hmm. Not not bad. Percy Watson was, was pretty good, too, as well. I remember Percy. when That was early uh, NXT Black and Gold days. Uh, Percy... Yes, he was. Yeah. Percy Watson yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. What yeah. I know of Joe Tessitore, because I listened to him a lot during uh, college football season, because he's a big college football announcer. He's part of like ESPN's like 70 teams for college football. I've always loved the way he calls game. He's got a great voice for, for to be a lead commentator. And he does have a little bit of a moxie and a swag to him when he talks about, uh, when he talks and he goes into descriptions about different players and where they're from and their history and stuff. So I, I'm yeah. I'm interested that this is happening now. They said it's going to happen later on in the summer. ESPN and WWE both uh, released articles about this happening. So he's going to still remain as a part of ESPN, but he's also going to do this as well. So he's just adding to his repertoire, which, hey, good for him. Man's making money. Um yeah, he's gonna be every, every, every Friday, Friday night, night. Yeah, on SmackDown, no pay per views, no big like. That's fine. That yeah, I, bother me because Michael Cole and Corey Graves do a great job yeah. by themselves. Yeah, and I think I like the I like the idea of having two two guys from the two different brands coming together for pay per views and working and working. Yeah, I do together. too. So we'll see we'll see how this works yeah. out for him. Um, I like I said, I'm excited. They, they haven't released a date yet for when he's going to cross out to gonna finally be a part of it. Um, it's interesting because now they're at the end of the Fox deal too as well. So it's interesting mm-hmm. timing. Mm-hmm. That that oh, ends, in ends in October. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It ends yeah. in October when they move to USA. So again, interesting timing. Do we have a date I, on that or not yet? Uh, I don't remember. Probably probably end of October. Yeah, end of October. Guess. Raw and SmackDown are gonna be It would make it would make sense that those things like end on Yeah, Raw and SmackDown are going to be on the same T V show, on the same channel for a couple of months before Raw goes to Netflix. They I believe they got an extension with USA Network. Yeah, yes, they got an extension. They did. So, like, like I said, it's going to be interesting times uh, for the latter half of the year. So let's move on to some things that happened on Raw. In particular, uh, Mommy's back in the greatest fashion ever. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, Chavo. This is clearly <laughs> Eddie and China all over again in a new form. It's so good. <laughs> it's amazing. It was, I watched it. It's like. I, I saw it on Twitter because like it was like, oh, it's twelve thirty at night. Let me check what yeah. happened on Raw. And this is where it popped up in the bleacher feed. I watched it. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Jazz is like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, Tommy's back. <laughs> so yes, correct, Charles. Someone call Steve Week will go because we do need security for this. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like this was fucking awesome, I dude. Love it was so the good. Build-up. The what's get lost in this whole thing is that Dom actually beat his father in the match and no one fucking cares. No one yeah. cares. No one cares. Yeah, finally. But what I mean, I love the moment. Liv straddles him in the middle of the ring, drags him down to the floor. <laughs> like I was like, they're about to. There, yeah, it was. It was. It was I'm not gonna lie. I'm yeah, not gonna, I'm I was like, lie. dude. Was I was like, Dom. <laughs> bet, no better time. And like, right, fucking now, just go for it. And he was about to, and then Rhea's music hit at the perfect time, and uh insanity ensued i i loved every moment of it and then i was mad at dom because i was like dom you've had two months to pull this off and get away with it and you kept resisting and now he's not going to get chicken nuggies anymore <laughs> and and here's why he should have done it ria's ria's mad at him anyway. <laughs> so if she's already mad why not just piss her off <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if, you, if you're toggling this close, this, if you're dipping your toes in, just, just yeah, go ahead. I was like, dude, dude, might as well. I mean, this man, if you think about 
It doesn't matter yeah. you're not at fault. It doesn't matter that you're not at fault. You shouldn't have been in the position to begin with. That's what she's going to say. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, Dom, <laughs> if you, like, Dom has a life that most ridic- most uh, heterosexual sister the males dream of. He's got a wife, a girlfriend, and a side chick. God damn, <laughs> yeah. that's so accurate. I should oh, cut that for a sound bite. Ooh, chocolate. Yeah, he gets nuggets and tennies. He got a got a girl to pay for his PlayStation 5 for him and his friends. Like, wow. like what a run. What a run. And a crappy mustache to boot, and somehow it still works for him. And he didn't even He's have so ugly. But the, the stats is so oh bad. God. I, do, I, I love it's the mustache. Very, it's, I mean, when I say I love the mustache, I love it's, the mustache. You know why? Because nobody, nobody, and nobody I mean nobody, that. rocks a mustache no, anymore. Not even in, in the end. Um, Joe Jonas unless they've been doing it, unless they've been doing it for like forty years. Like my dad rocks a mustache. He's been doing it for like fifty it's, yeah, it's, years. Yeah, it's part of who he is now. <laughs> yeah, it's part of who he is. You, you see, no one knew rock a exactly. mustache. Yeah, and then just mommy's back. It, it, they don't know if she's. She hasn't said she's cleared yet. So what happened off air? Because they cut because obviously time and whatnot. And Zordon's calling me. Um, so Dom literally pulled an Eddie. And was trying to like talk his way out of it, and Rhea just didn't want to have anything to do with it. Live like like a like a woman on the on an episode of Cheaters went running. If anybody's ever seen Cheaters, ran oh uh, fucking ran. Cheaters, Cheaters is the greatest trash television show of all time. And there's a there's a Cheaters channel on Google TV, and it's fantastic. And I watch it whenever I get bored because it's literally a marathon on all the time. Do you know there are? T- I I, sh- I should find that. I do have the TNA on my <laughs> do TV. Do you know there have been, there it's have not been as three good. hosts of Cheaters now? Because I remember the first two. I've been the third one's this random black guy. I was like, this is amazing. I was like, I'm learning so much. Anywho. Um, so there was footage on, on, on Liv Morgan as she was cowering behind. Uh, Liv so took good. off like she was the father. That's also very true. <laughs> That's also very true. (laughs) So Liv was watching behind the curtain, making sure she wasn't getting followed. And then WWE cameras caught her as she turned around as the coast was clear. And she started uh, snickering, gave a great little uh, devilish grin as she walked through. So the scenes be potentially part of the plan. So I'm going to, we're going to figure out where it's going to go, but mommy's back. (laughs) I'm assuming she's going to be cleared. This is leading to SummerSlam. Liv and Rhea has to. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked. Back. I'm kind of shocked too because I was I was for three months. She just Googled. got you, she just got married like a week ago. and she just got married too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ruth, you remember she got hurt? We Googled it. It was like six to eight yeah, months. Well, uh, we did, they never disclosed what her injury. Ever disclosed specifically what it was? What, yeah, from true. what I saw, from what we saw, like when we were there, and from the replays, I was like broken collarbone. No way she's back at any time this year. I because collarbones suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but I guess it wasn't as bad as it seemed. So, hey, power to her. So I remember, had- I remember when she when she first got injured, people were like, "They let Seth Rollins keep the belt during an injury. Why don't they let it to do it to Rhea and Ricky?" Both you and I wrote that off as that's nonsense. But looking I mean, now, it's been three months. That's, she could have stayed. They could have <laughs> stretched it out and let her hang yeah. on. To they it. probably they really stretched could've. it so she could like get married and like not have to like deal with. I it. mean, it is a good excuse. <laughs> so like go yeah. away, yeah. It, it did. It did. It did one. It also did wonders for Correct. his career. Yeah, yeah, it did. Because this this would have been a story if Rhea wasn't hurt. They just kind of booked. They just kind of reversed it. Yeah. Instead of Liv winning the title at like SummerSlam, Liv won a title. Yeah, I think it actually helps the story in general because like it would. I, everything was stolen from her. Well, everything was stolen from her, and also Rhea wasn't around, so that it gives Liv the freedom to kind of yeah. run around and be a menace without having to work. Yeah, without having character. to worry about Rio yeah. always looking over her shoulder. So it kind of works out in everybody's advantage. Uh, yeah, yeah, great so point. I suspect she might wrestle scene because I know her extensions are out. I think that might have been it for looks the, what it looks like in that picture. Yeah, I feel like you you and you and Rhea have like the same hair design almost. Yeah. Yo, I can never tell when a woman's wearing extensions. I can never tell. Well, she has hair. Her natural hair is a little bit longer than yeah. mine. I'm almost at shoulder length now. And then she, right before, she, like, around Mania, she put extensions in because her hair was mad long all of a sudden. Yeah. Usually, uh, usually from what I've gathered from watching WWE and just progressing in general, most women have extensions in their hair when they're wrestling. Most. Yeah, no, for sure. Yes. Yeah. 
most, most if not all, but most, I would say, comfortably. Uh, we're going to speak it because Raw was about the women this uh, this week. And also, uh, Daddy DeVille. We have Mommy and we have Daddy back as well. Daddy DeVille returned. Uh. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, this was on. This was on. This was skipped on Hulu. Yeah, Rock Daddy Deville returned, took out Damage yeah, Control. Yeah, Daddy Deville has completed uh, her recruitment of Sonya and and Zoe Stark. Who I don't know how Zoe Stark's still walking after taking a Mishinoku driver off of a freaking ladder. <laughs> oh, yeah, that hurt. <laughs> she got murdered. Yeah, yeah. So this is a brand new faction. It's, it's kind of like a female shield. That's kind of how they're standing. Up. It's just like hot. It's just like hot lesbian. <laughs> God, it is kind of like a, it is, it is kind of, they should have called them the hot lesbians. We have hot lesbians before. I don't know if Zoe, well, I don't know if Zoe Stark's a lesbian. I don't want to assume. No, Zoe, Zoe's in a heterosexual relationship, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Um, Zoe's heterosexual, but she can pass as lesbian. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this because before Sonya had the, the stalker, I think she had the stalker, right? Like stalker and. All yeah. the legalists and all that stuff. Yeah. Sonya was ha- doing a really good work, especially on the mic. We used to call her like the female Kylo Ren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she was a she was a manager. GM. And going and and being really weird to Naomi yeah. for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that was that was a weird storyline that they kind of just dropped after a while. Yeah, it was it was very <laughs> weird. It's like, I'm just gonna bully no Naomi reason. and like kind of make it not about race, but not really yeah, make it about it was race. A Vince call. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, but I, I'm glad to see Sonya back. It looks she got physical, so it looks like she's going to get in the ring. Um <laughs> Wow. Wow to Quan. He said Sierra Tango uniform Delta. Great job. <laughs> Great job. I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. Great job, Taquan. That's a that's a winner right Taquan, there. That's, a, lot of the year. <laughs> that's a, year. a winner right there. Uh so this they're the, they're the yeah. studs. This is very interesting, uh, especially since I know Shayna Baszler is about to do another, uh, about to do another blood sport run, a blood sport run along with the Creed brothers as well. That's happening in Brooklyn. If you want to see Josh Alexander's blood sport, will <laughs> is blood sport wrestling like what it's is blood sport? Very extreme form of wrestling, very death matchy. It's like it's like modern day XCW. No, not that bad. Uh, put it this way, um, yeah. Shayna did it during WrestleMania week. She went up against, I think, Masa Slamovich, and she pretty much, like, stomped this woman's head in. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so they're doing that again in Brooklyn, so it's going to be very, very interesting. It's a little bit... I, when is it? Uh, July 28th or something like that. I got to double check. Dom, Dom Dom did it, uh, WrestleMania weekend as well. He did Bloodsport, uh, as well. So, so we have a new faction. We don't know what they're called yet, but it, it's the Daddy DeVille. So we have Mommy returned and Daddy returned as well, all in the same show. So let's go into the show that everybody was waiting for this week. Money in the Bank, or this past weekend. Money in the Bank emanating from Toronto. They try to white out. They failed miserably. <laughs> um, but <laughs> they, yeah, they failed they badly. Failed very so miserably, badly. Miserably. I was like, wow, they didn't do it. <laughs> That's what happens when you announce it like, Less than twenty four hours before the event, they're like, "Wow, you know what? Would, you know what would have helped if WWE actually sold white T shirts on their shop." I have no wrestling T shirts yeah. that are bl- that are white. Most of them are black. I do. Oh, well, apparently, Winnipeg does the <laughs> yeah. white out. Uh, Penn State also does a white out as well. That's where they're trying to emulate that, but they didn't. But first, first off, overall thoughts on Money in the Bank, kayfabe. I liked it. Um, I. I feel like this is like an unpopular, going to be an unpopular opinion. I don't think I loved it as much as everyone else did. Mm-hmm. And I and I like I don't know. I think Drew kind of ruined it for me. If I'm being honest, <laughs> it's very interesting. I I literally hated it. I like I like I like that like Punk and shit came out, but like I didn't like him winning. But whatever. Um, but the John Cena stuff made it kind of like it was like redeeming for oh, yeah me. we're gonna go back and forth with the there... john cena stuff in a moment yeah yeah i'm not well yeah. we're, we're, we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the person you cannot see uh will tarashak what are your thoughts on money in the bank you were telling you're telling telling me off air that uh you really enjoyed that money in the bank i did i thought i thought it was great i liked it top to bottom i mean solo sakoa pin cody Rhodes. like the fuck <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was genuinely shocked because, like, you know, when when it's the main event of um, Cody and the Soul and against the Bloodline, you're like, oh, Roman's coming back. Of course, Roman's coming back. I didn't suspect no. that at all. No. 
They were like, they were just like, no, we're going to make Solo the most hated guy in wrestling. <laughs> As you should. Just don't <laughs> mind us. We're going we're gonna to legitimize Solo real quick and be like, okay, I, you kind of have to acknowledge him. Like, you have to. You kind of do. He's a champion. <laughs> yeah. So, like, in the world of kayfabe, I thought it was incredible. I love that Solo pinned Cody because I didn't see it coming. And I, I seeing Winnipeg just it's go Toronto, silent actually. when, when, Toronto goes silence when like France was popping and the happy and like Scotland was popping and crazy <laughs> and Puerto Rico was popping and crazy. Canada, <laughs> oh, you're going home sad and annoyed and you're gonna cry. And I was just like, I was so happy yeah. with Canada. <laughs> so I thought the ending was great. I I for one liked Drew cashing in. Um, we can go into the detail when we get, get to that. The money, the, the matches themselves were great. The women went to town. I liked that it was five matches. The Cena Hargit segment was fantastic. So the show was well paced. I loved my wings. Got to watch it from oh, bed. Beautiful. It was just beautiful. all around. I was very into the show. I was doing the in my bed. <laughs> like I was all about it, dude. I enjoyed the show a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, nine nine for me. Nine for I me. forgot a comment I forgot to make. The post show was my favorite part of the I whole. Was on a, I was literally just about to hit up the. Post show was you know excellent. What, the post show. Post show was, John, John Cena is my king of the night. We do not, still but, do um, but you know what was great oh, about... Well, John Cena is my king of the night, too. Well, you, do you know, what we, you know what, how, what they emulate the post show after? Because I, I figured out a lot of people were very keen on it online. It's inside the NBA. One more question. It's literally TNT. I've never seen that in a day in my so? life. It's, it's like the way that yeah. inside the NBA does, or you know, NBA on TNT... Um, does their post game is you have the panel, you have your Shaq, your Charles, your Kenny Smith, and they, they go, go back, back and, and forth. forth between like somebody's like like right after like they got solo on a headset because he was in Gorilla right after, and that's usually what they do with like the player of the game, and they'll interview him and solo's like acknowledge yeah. me, blah, blah blah, and threw it away, and then you and then they they'll talk, they'll talk, they'll talk, and then they go to the presser, they talk, they talk, they talk, they go back to the presser, they talk, they talk, they talk, go back to the presser, and then they talk again, and then the show's over. That's literally how NBA like NBA on TNT does their post game. It was fantastic. It was, it was, it was an hour and a half. It was an hour and a half. Uh, I mean, I, I think it was long because Cena yeah. went long. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, he should have went, went longer. Um, but I could have, I could have went without the back and forth a lot. I think after Cena went, it should have just went after one after another after another. Tiffany Stratton also needs work with press. Oh yeah, I, she looked terrified. Yeah, I think they pulled her early. Yeah, she looked. She didn't look great on the presser at all. Yo, Ben Rice, two run home run, nice. four three. Yeah, Tiffy did not look great in the pressure, and neither did her lip filler. I was like, ooh, does not look good, Tiffy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, that's why they gave her the briefcase. It's just, it's just an opportunity for her, and she needs to learn. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you. It, it was it was interesting. Throw her into the fire. Throw her into the fire. That's how she learns to well throw in the water. It's called it's flooding true. principle. It's a psych. It's a psych technique. Mm-hmm. Anywho, uh, let's go to uh, yes, the biggest thing that happened in Money in the Bank that did not happen. Well, happened in the ring, but also outside of the ring as well. Uh, Trish Stratus showed up and announced. Oh, hey, by the way, John Cena's here, which was kind of spoiled because John Cena was taking pictures with people at the at the superstore <laughs> that they had as well. Uh, there was an old there. Was, it was a shock to me. I Someone no took a idea. picture of John Cena and posted it online. They're like, John Cena's in Toronto. I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? Whatever. He's to, the the big thing that people are like, oh, he's gonna pitch WrestleMania in Canada, like he went, like he did last year when he was in London and pitched WrestleMania <laughs> in London. Again, <laughs> Triple H came to Canada. With his fucking hearts. Yeah. Um. So John Cena comes out, and he he literally. You you see that he puts out the the towel that says the last time is now. There's a closed door on the back of his shirt. And I go fuck. I might have to buy a John. Oh. I was like, I might have to buy a John Cena shirt now, <laughs> or at mm-hmm. le- at least the towel. The towel's like ten bucks. At least the towel and do that. And I'm like, there's no way this is happening right now. And then he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm here to announce my retirement. I'm like, you are from Massachusetts. You're retiring in Canada. That's got to be an act of treason. That's mm-hmm. got to be a complete act of treason. Mm-hmm. I was like, why Canada? And he was like, I don't even thinking why Canada. Like, yes, <laughs> we John are I am. thinking why Canada. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but like, why? <laughs> and then he went on to explain, like, he's like, hey, I'm not retiring right now, which would have been the craziest thing in the world. Um, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. like, he, and he goes on to explain it in the presser. He's like, I'm going to run through 2025. It'll be my last WrestleMania, which my for, my first thought was, fuck, Las Vegas is going to get really expensive now. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he's like, I'm doing my last Royal Rumble. I was like, oh, I guess we're going to Indianapolis now. <laughs> for, <laughs> you know what's really funny? John Cena did not get a one more match. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, you know what? It's all right. He's like, I'm they're retiring. Like, yeah, they're like, right. okay. Okay, okay, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to run through all of 2025 in a press conference said he has 30 to 40 dates, which is pretty good, you know, considering his schedule and whatever comes out. I know Peacemaker's coming yeah. out soon as well in the DC Universe and on Max. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen Peacemaker Season 1, fucking do it. He's brilliant in it. Um, and... And he took a bunch of random ass questions and took a really long time in the press. But he said, hey, I'm going to the press and you can ask me anything. Which I was like, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> that, that is absolutely freaking awesome. But then. Yo, do you see, do you see that Vince question? Well, for Cena? Oh, it was? Yeah, for Cena. You see how he handled that like a fucking he, yeah, he, pro? Incredible. It was, it was, a, it was, Class it was a good dodge. Mm. Mm. He's like, listen, man. Asked and answered. Yeah, I answered it already. Look it up. It's I I like I answered this when it was relevant. I give my answer. It's public. It was on a big source. You can yeah. go find it. Yeah. There's, there's for, Ask yeah. an answer. Fuck you next. <laughs> yeah. Now John John Cena is, is, if not anything, always always the consummate professional man no matter what he's doing. But what Triple H two. Yeah, no, I can't talk about legal. Next. That's the right answer. It's a it's an ongoing legal dispute it for is. the company. He cannot talk about it. That is le- he legally cannot do it. <laughs> um, but it, we got us all to speculating, especially on the Discord and stuff. Two questions now that we know that it's he's not retired because I thought initially he was retiring at WrestleMania. I go fuck, that's going to be mm-hmm. insane. He's mm-hmm. not retiring at Mania. He's retiring sometime after Mania, whenever his dates are up. So the big question, we'll we'll do one question at a time with Cena. Kayfabe. Actually, no, go to Will. Will, who was John Cena's last WrestleMania match? Fuck, man. I have no idea. Because here's the thing, from that presser too, he has full creative control with Triple H and creative approval. Mm. So he can do whatever he wants as long as it doesn't affect business. Okay. Right? So he he can pretty much pick his storylines, pick his um, opponents. And Triple H has literally said, we're going to, you can do it however you want to do it. You've earned the right, which he has. I have no problem with that at all, but Triple H is like, listen, we gotta do this for Triple H is also like, I'm gonna help you create this yeah. storyline. So input, just so you know, that, that was him saying, yeah, but we have final yeah. approval, which duh, which is totally fair. So if he's gonna be fancy booking this, you gotta think like John Cena. How do you do that? Because he also said it's gonna be very into his character. No heel turns, no final boss. He's like, it's gonna be me one last time being my genuine self. He did say so, he's retiring the George. Who- <laughs> he did say he said the timing of jorts. He's like, after this, I'm no physically gonna see me in a suit and tie yeah. forever. And that's when it hit me. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. I might buy the shirt too. <laughs> I've never bought a John Cena shirt. I've never bought the headbands. I love that I have his book. <laughs> Don't you have the <laughs> Cena jersey? Guys. I do have this. I do have the the, the soccer jersey. I do have the Cena yeah. soccer jersey, but I've never had this fruit, his fruity pebble <laughs> shirts. Like I might have to do the, do the full thing: hat, sweatpants, Headband. shirt, the jorts, all of it. I'm gonna do all of it. <laughs> I was just saying, no, I'm gonna be just, John just, Cena just for forever. Halloween. What was that, Kay? So I just think I'll be John Cena for Halloween. Probably. Yeah. But anyway, who's his who's his final opponent? Final WrestleMania have, opponent. At WrestleMania opponent, I have no idea. Um, the big one is Randy Orton. I don't know why people want to see that match again. I do not want to see John Cena Randy Orton ever again. Oh, I want to see. I it would. Again. I wouldn't mind having a John Cena Edge, one more John Cena Edge feud. If Edge wasn't an. If I wouldn't Edge mind wasn't an that. AEW. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind someone young like John Cena Braun Breaker. I think would be great. Um, John Cena CM Punk one more time would be pretty good. But I have no idea because it's it's what story do you tell? Do you still what what is the what is the true never give up story of John Cena? Ooh. Like what if it's you know how Rick I was thinking of this like what if you know how Ric Flair was the last match I lose is the one I yeah. retire on. John Cena's is the last match I win is the one I retire <laughs> so- on. He goes on an L tour <laughs> the entire year, and then his last kids. I'm never gonna give up. I am not gonna give up. 
I'm going to win at least one match on this tour. And the last match he wins is his That's a good match. That's a, I like that oh. idea. I like that idea. That's, that's a good, that, right? that's that a good flip the, the script. Nev- that is the true never that's give good- up story. And he puts everyone over, hopefully, on yeah. the way out. You know what this reminds me? It's what I think is going to remind me of closely of his United States Championship Open Challenge. That was my favorite. Yeah. Yes. I, it was incredible. Come, you want some, come get some. And he fucking loses every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that, that's a really good sob Rudy story. But uh, you, you mentioned just some stuff about WrestleMania. But k who does John Cena, in your opinion, face at WrestleMania Vegas? Okay, so I was going to say okay. Braun Breaker as well. Just because I feel like John Cena, part of this tour is to wrestle talent he hasn't had the chance to yet. And to yeah. put the new guys over. So, like, it seems like they want Braun Breaker to be the guy, right? They want him to be Goldberg, if, at least. For real. Or if not Braun Breaker, I could see him wrestling someone like L.A. Knight. Yeah. Another person who very well could be, yeah, someone who very well could be the guy. Also on this tour, like, I want to see him wrestle Punk again. I want to see him wrestle Randy again. I want to see him wrestle R-Truth so R-Truth can wrestle his childhood hero. I honestly, I like that. honestly, R-Troop could be a great one for for him to go up against. And like R-Troop is like, I don't want to hurt my hero. And John's like, hurt me. This is total yeah. well, well, what, let, let me ask. Let me guys ask you guys this: What do you mm. want more? Do you want more matches you've never seen, or do you want like, would you rather have 20, 15 to twenty different matches? Or three to four different storylines. Uh, I mean, if you are doing, if he's just doing once, I'm gonna get some open challenges. You, and the way I see it is like anybody can get it at any time. I want to see more U.S. open challenges where you don't know who's going to challenge him every week or every time he shows yeah, me up. Too. And since it is such, in my idea and my, well, a little bit of my my mark in me, and since it's he's such an overarching figure in the world of pro wrestling, this could be something that a lot of people. A lot of old older wrestlers from his past could show up, sign like one day contracts. Like it is, it could be a possibility just because of the fact that it is John Cena, he's such a great ambassador for all of pro wrestling. That Edge could show up, that he brokers a deal with AEW, and Edge shows up. Yeah, it's possibility. R- Zach Ryder said, "I want, I want my shot at John Cena after John Cena fucking destroyed him for that one time." Yeah, yeah right. Like, what if it's everyone he's ever just buried, comes back? Yeah, ever. <laughs> Except for like, you, know, you can do Uncle Howdy instead yeah. of Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Rusev comes back. Just, 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 just to like, I'm gonna, yeah, Wade all Barrett. Of, all of the back, Nexus comes back, right? <laughs> and then he beats him. He beat. He, he gets Honestly, back on the I want Miz yeah, I and John Cena wrestling. to to be a thing. Uh, Charles also had a good one saying the anonymous Raw GM said <laughs> John Cena should say. Oh <laughs> my god! I I don't know, but. I'm so excited to see it. Me too. And I, I love that he, John Cena, is has the same mentality of, I don't want to leave the WWE family just because my body can't take it anymore and I want to have an acting career doesn't mean I still can't do things behind yeah. the scenes, which I don't know how that's going to work. John, imagine John Cena as your agent <laughs> yeah, for right. a match. Yeah. You know, do a shoulder <laughs> tackle? Is there another shoulder <laughs> tackle? <You know. laughs> It's a fire. That's a good point. What if we what if we get a Daniel Bryan return at some point? You know, oh, I love that. Too. Yeah, da- Daniel Bryan. You know, the Hardy, Matt and Jeff are thinking about returning to WWE. The, Matt has come out and openly said, I believe our careers end in WWE. You know, mm-hmm. of course they do. Everyone's you know, so so it's a big thing. So like WrestleMania is wide open. I would love to see the Miz be the one we're going to segue to who retires John Cena. There's been a lot of ideas about who retires John Cena. One of my big things is the Miz for all the shit that John Cena put the Miz through throughout his entire career. The Miz one upping John Cena one last time and retiring, retiring mm-hmm. him is a storybook moment for the Miz, even though Miz is already a first ballot hall of famer. Gunther, could be Nikki Bella. Stop it, Charles. Gunther, <laughs> <laughs> another a Gunther. Gunther retiring John Cena makes Gunther an automatic like a legend. Like the person who's the person who's John Cena's it, last match that potentially beat Cena is legend. Gunther. Yeah. Gunther. Gunther would be, would be huge. <laughs> If for legal, re- if not good for, for, and if for legal reasons, this probably would 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 be an issue. Brock, because there's an idea in my head that Brock returns to just do the same thing he did at SummerSlam, 
That's where John's, oh last, where John's last match just wrecks him. I mean, if you if you really, really want to bookend it in a perfect world, I would say Kurt Angle. That would be beautiful. I might lose with aggression. You start you with, end Kurt with Kurt Angle. You end with and, Kurt and Angle. And Cena, they just flip and Cena's like, what think what what do you what do you think you have that makes you Kurt, you're retired. What do you what makes you think you can retire Ruthless John Cena? Aggression. Ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression. <laughs> Slaps him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you, we, we oh my pass. god it, just, it would be amazing I have a, why is his merch so ugly though it's, it's generic yeah like I'm, like I'm on the shop right now because i'm like i have to support the cause obviously honestly put all but, of, put i want all of john cena's merch from when he started to when to like right now all up on well, the shop right now <laughs> i someone's gonna buy all of it that, I want the hustle, loyalty, respect with the fucking the bar, the chain fa- blink fence. Oh, chain gang one and the dog. Yeah, dude, I want another one of those soccer jerseys. <laughs> the wash kind of destroyed it. Yeah, so here's there's a, a Cena jersey on here. Bring back Armando. Stop, stop trying to bring Armando Estrada back, Fretz, and everybody in the goddamn chat. Been hearing that for like three weeks. Stop trying to bring Armando Estrada back in WWE. <laughs> <laughs> you need to drop it for God's sakes. Also, yeah, we this one person we don't need is Armando Estrada. I have another one. What? For who? The Rock. Ooh. Ooh. I think the rocks. The rocks. The rocks too busy make, getting himself um, the biggest meme in all of the internet at the moment. The great. Has you have you well, have you guys seen the WrestleMania documentary? No, what is? It? I, haven't, I haven't seen it. Me. So it's it's so it's from the WrestleMania documentary that finally came out on YouTube about WrestleMania 40. And they're not bringing back up to Del Rio. Charles, stop it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alberto Del Rio might be in jail actually. Uh, yeah, or going, going to, to jail, jail actually. Uh, so they finally came out with this documentary. Uh, Tom Rinaldi narrates it, which is freaking awesome. Um, and they, they talk about everything. And Triple H pretty much said, like, you know, the, the initial idea for WrestleMania 40 was Punk, Seth, Roman, Cody. That was the, yeah. that was the idea going into October. Mm-hmm. The Rock came on board, blah, 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 blah. They decided that they were potentially going to go with The Rock and Roman. And they they told Cody this the night of the Rumble. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> but they're still like you're gonna yeah we're going yeah and Triple H goes on paper and <laughs> I got good news. Good bad news, news is you're going to win the Rumble. <laughs> bad news is it doesn't actually mean anything this year. Um, and Triple H went on Triple H went on record and saying he goes, we told Cody that he was that he's probably not going to be the main event of WrestleMania, and we didn't have a backup plan for him. And I'm like, that's bad management, Triple H. That's a piss poor. You don't mm-hmm. you don't tell your star you've been building for three years, hey, you're not gonna main event, and we have no idea what the hell we're gonna do with you. But you're gonna win the rumble, so be happy. <laughs> so he's like, I'm gonna let Roman down. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Cody probably did go into business for himself in that moment. Cause that's why Roman yeah. was just like, the fuck are you what doing? Do you because remember after the Rumble, they had Roman and Seth in the boxes. Oh, he pointed and at it, yeah. Cody pointed at Roman, and Roman's like, what the fuck? Because because Roman's like, I'm going to face the Rock. It could, what are well, you doing? At the, at the way that they put it in the document, he was in, uh, that they that's, they were leaning towards going that way. You know, which is him for they were going that way. Mm. But so that all goes on, and the Rock talks about in the documentary how they went with the idea and they they teased it when he came out you know uh, the first day of the year at raw day one blah 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 and then when they finally made the switch they saw the rich on the rock was like you know if if a portion of the fans don't like it then i don't want to piss any of them off so like the idea and he's, he has this pose where he's like looking at the camera oh, making it yeah he was like idea. so the sole idea of switching the main event laid on me was my choice to make and so it it, point, it points a picture of The Rock was the one who decided, hey, let's flip this whole thing. And so he's like, you know, I'm The Rock. I'm like God around <laughs> here and I'm bigger than the business. So I mean, I mean, he, then again, at that point, yeah. he was on the board. So yeah. he's not wrong. You know what I mean? Like, he's so, not wrong. He's like, yeah, I pulled I pulled my final boss card on Triple H. Like, so so they, 
I mean, he's not wrong. It's they, factually they accurate. Took, they took this picture of The Rock with like his hands out while he's speaking, talking about how he was the one that decided to redo WrestleMania 40, and they, people just memeing us. People are like, and then I told Cleese, the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and it's going to be a hit. And, oh, my God. And then I told you. So, so Rock, Rock played himself as his office captain. <laughs> yeah. Zero. There's another one that was like, and then I told. Then I told uh, Rikishi to run over Stone Cold and say he did it for The Rock. Like <laughs> how The Rock saved WrestleMania. Yeah. There's a there's a bunch of them in our Discord. Uh, there's a so yeah. So The Rock pretty much stroked yeah. Zeke. I haven't watched the doc yet, but yeah, I every, there's another one where it says, "And then I told Tony to air the footage from one play." <laughs> Oh, I did see that. I That's did see the that meme. meme. Yeah. That's how that meme is like. Yeah, and that at that at that point, I told Tony Khan to play the footage. Of Wembley. Yeah, <laughs> go check out the doc. It's only an hour. It's it's very well done. All things considered, just you know. St- I know it's just it's, it's just the on rock YouTube. being the rock. I have to actually go to YouTube. So, YouTube. I haven't watched it yet. So before we move on to to rest stuff, we still got we still got a lot of how the rock safe wrestling. I mean, that's true. Um. Before we move on from Cena and all of that, here's the big, here's the bigger question in the room: Does he go for seventeen? Because remember, yes. there are yes. two world, there are two world titles now, and John Cena doesn't have to go for the WWE Championship. He can go for the world title, and it still counts. Yeah. What? You know, I say yes so fast, <laughs> but then I'm just like, dude, the world title picture is so crowded right, right now. now. We've got eight. We've got eight right months now till, till Mania. So, I wouldn't mind his last match being the one. World he title, wins. he just doesn't get it. Yeah, like that could be the story too. I mean, does he? Here's the thing: Does Cena want seventeen? That's also the big. Or does he have too much that's respect? That's also the big Rick, question. Or or does he have too much respect for Ric Flair? Because it that is his decision. I think that's fair to say it's his yeah. decision. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Like if if Vince if Vince said John you're doing it John would yeah. do it but if it's his decision I don't know if he'll Here's do it one. so I mean flip flip a coin it is a flip a coin I think it also depends on if Randy gets a couple more world titles because Randy's at what four is Randy at fourteen or fifteen is Randy's at fourteen, 14. Or is he at 15? I thought it was 15. He can, his, can his back hold out for three more title reigns he, did, he I don't know. money in the bank <laughs> so um he's because that's also some of the thing out because like it, like. I can't think of a bigger story at that point. If it goes, you'd have to hop to the world title in eight months, which no, no one's really. Because well, Triple H can't. Yeah, do you it. know. Yeah. Randy, like Randy Cena, Cena wins. He gets seventeen, and they're both at sixteen. Well, that's, let me ask, oh, that's a that's an intriguing it, fucking question. It, it is. It is. And personally, I want John Cena to break it because I'm a John Cena mark, and I hate ties yeah. at the top. So that is reason number one. But is it worth at the expense of a good title reign from uh, Gunther, a good title reign from Damian mm-hmm. Priest, a good title reign from Jey Uso, a good title reign from Braun Breaker if they over, over the next year? You or could Seth be in that again. Picture. So what, or Seth again. So if you're going to put John Cena in a title picture, you're putting a breakout star on mm-hmm. hold. Unless that breakout star is the champion, John Cena goes up against them and and loses to the breakout star. True. Yeah, and That's John true. Cena puts him over. Very, very accurate. True. Which in that case, but it would be. In win- that case, I would like if that's the case, and if the trajectory is going the way I think it is, Cena and Gunther WrestleMania 40 for the world title sounds bl- unbelievable. Yeah, Crazy. Yeah, I would do that. Like Cena wins the Rumble and then he goes up against Gunther. Unbelievable. For the title. Unbelievable story. Yeah. At Mania. Yeah, he caught, he he slays one more. Oh giant. yeah, that's the story going into it. And, and then Gunther's career never <laughs> rebounds like everyone else ever happened to. You know what? And second thought, let's let's remember who we're talking about. John Cena. He can't put someone over. He's just not good at it. If there is a match that I think I want <laughs> to see, um, especially if this is going to be a big retirement run for him, what if if we're going to go a little horror here because that's really leaning? What if the Wyatt Six removes John Cena from like from all of pro wrestling? What if that's the final motion? If the White Six survives that long, no, I don't think you do like Gaga for his final. You can do it somewhere in the run, but not his final. Like, I would like, like to match. see John Cena do a cinematic run with Bray's brother, like a cinematic match with Bray's brother. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Uh, <laughs> someone not from T- someone from TNA, not named John Hendry, NXT, but I won't say who is, just in case. No, we're not watching. I heard the I heard MSK might have returned on NXT as well. Uh, which 
Yeah. That's good. Really? Well, yeah, well, Wentz got hired by Impact again once, you know, the the allegations from him were, like, dropped or revealed to be falsified. Um, They're like, listen, WWE, you give me a contract or I give you a lawsuit. <laughs> Which one's it going to so be? I, and Shawn Michaels is just like, I yeah. guess it's a contract. So, so there's that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things emanating from from the John Cena thing, and we're gonna get our answers sooner rather than later. But this run is pretty much to get the white girl out of it. John Cena's Eras tour has begun. This is the Eras tour. Yeah, <laughs> this yes, is. is pretty... I'm I'm glad he's I'm glad he's doing a full year, and I I, I have I'm very confident it's gonna be fine because John Cena's gonna do what yeah. he wants to do. He's always done right by the fans, at least in his mind, and it's gonna have some help from Triple H and whoever else is like Paul. I would love to be see involved the, too, or whoever he I wants to be involved. I would love to see involved. this to be the thing that kind of helps to unify the pro wrestling world because if we start getting outside stars going to face Cena, that would be cool as shit. Yeah, and good then luck. good luck. Yeah, but it, like it would be cool as shit. That's just you know stuff. But into the money in the bank. The men's money in the bank kicked off the show. It was pretty wild. Uh, Carm- Maybe. Seems like Eddie Kingston has come for Ricky's and an instead of mine for once. Yeah, it right. It is no Eddie kidding. Kingston. Yep, I'm oh, here. Ricky? Ricky? Yep, I'm you here. Back? Yep, I'm here. Welcome back. I am back. Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for that. All right. I know what the fix for this next time. Anywho, we're continuing. I was just going off about money in the bank and how we had a great shit from fucking... I just shut up. I know. I, I know. I hate AOL too, Charles. Anywho. Um, but yeah, no. This thing was freaking fan-fucking-tastic. Hmm. <clears throat> We had, uh, what was it, Carmelo Hayes, Jay Uso, and then, unfortunately, Drew McIntyre won. Those bumps looked very painful. They yeah. looked really, really painful. I'm not going to lie, I love Drew winning. Tell, talk about it. I mean, because I didn't, I didn't really see it coming. I, didn't, I did not think Drew was winning. I thought Punk was going to screw him over, but I'm like, I mean, no, if, if Punk screws him over for the cash-in... I think that's better, honestly, because Punk didn't say, Punk said specifically, you're going to never get a title, which means I'm going to screw you only in title situations. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let you get cl- so close, but not quite there. This would be like screwing him a step too early because it's sweeter mm-hmm. doing it when he's going for the title, not for an opportunity at the title. Yeah. So Drew winning, I think, is his good yeah, storytelling. Yeah, it, it was interesting that, that Drew won. I did not think Drew was going to win, but Drew won, and I was like, fuck, this is actually going to, like, you know, be be a pretty serious thing. And then and then the world title occurred with him and Damian Priest. And the weird thing happened with that. Besides the fact that Punk uh came, that Punk attacked. So you had Damian Priest and Seth Rollins. And they're putting on a pretty good thing. And so they do a suplex segment where Seth finally hits a Falcon Arrow on Priest. And it appears that Priest doesn't kick out at all. Oh, that was that was, yeah, that was it bad. Looked, I didn't catch that. Yeah, it, it was, was really yeah, how <laughs> everybody in the crowd <laughs> was like, talk? "What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this, and from what I know from first hand knowledge from uh, from a, from a ref uh, that has worked for WWE, is that you are taught traditionally that. You count the three no matter what. It is on the performer in the ring to kick out when they're supposed to kick out. You do not save the performer. That's traditionally what it was. I don't know, dude. Here's the thing. If if they count the three count. It screws everything up. That yeah. fucks up. That fucks up yeah. everything. Because Seth has a title and then he retains a title via disqualification because Drew just cashed yeah. in. So and then you you have punk. It just it takes away from everything. I know the ref's supposed to count count through, but the ref did the right thing in that thing moment. Yeah, <laughs> and not counting yeah. through. He a thousand percent did yeah, the right it, it, thing. It's a rough call. Uh, I listened to a little busted open radio and and uh, bully Ray or Bubba Ray, um, and he talked about he watched it and he said that he looked at Priest and. It seemed that Priest was doing what's like a non-normal wrestling motion. He was kind of wiggling his fingers, kind of insinuating that Priest might have mm-hmm. been knocked out. Yeah, that he had, he had a, stinger. a stinger or something, and that's why he couldn't kick out. 
Um, and in that moment, what the fuck do you do? Like if he like, and especially if, like if Seth's covering him, I, I doubt Seth realized Priest can't kick out of this. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then what, what do you do? do? Yeah. <laughs> like if you're Seth, what do you do? You don't, you don't just get yeah, up. Yeah, like you would have, you, he would, <laughs> Seth would have had to have the awareness in the moment of a split second to be like, he can't kick out of this. I have to like raise his arm for him or somehow like find a fake it. And you don't yeah. do that. Um, and so that seems to be the prevailing theory that maybe Priest was knocked out or maybe Drew's music hit. I mean, he he did he did take a bump. I don't like I, I don't think the, the music hit too late. That was the other theory. I yeah. think he was supposed to. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're Triple H, if you're anyone else, like, listen, they already broke kayfabe by with, with the rest of me documentary. Sure. Like Triple H tried to cover it in the press conference, a press thinger. He was like, yeah, the ref. I don't know what the refs are. Like <laughs> you're trying to blame the ref. He, if you want to say face, blame it on the music. But yeah, we we didn't um, do the music at, at the right time. Yeah, yeah, we like, yeah we it was a screw up on production because he did put over Damian Priest. I mean, it sucks for Damian. He was fucking pissed I was, when he got the yeah. three count. He was so mad. Yeah. And yeah, he fucked up, dude. I mean, there's like nothing you can, if you're knocked out. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it sucks because he's gonna get the blame for it. And what Seth said on Raw was perfect. He's like, "Listen, you did good, but when you go into SummerSlam, you have be better. to be yeah. better. You got to be better." Yeah. And it's true. My, my, it's true because Damian Priest, great match. He puts he on does. phenomenal great matches. Worker. Main event matches. He puts Absolutely. on main event matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my my thing with my thing with the Seth and and Priest interaction was Priest was like, "Oh yeah, you know that deal we made to have that match? Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore." I was like, "Why did we have the match in the first place?" <laughs> yeah, you should, yeah you I was like, why, why, why are we, yeah, why are we doing sense. that? Then Punk came. I know you're trying to be the bigger yeah. man, but like, then Punk came in with good old fashioned just hate and rage, which I thought was hysterical. And they got they let Punk get away with choking somebody, the same thing that they yeah. fired Daniel Bryan right. for. <laughs> he also pretty much murdered uh, the real the real doctor. <laughs> oh no, that was uh, that was. Well, or is that that or was, was no, that match? was Jacob Fatu in the. Uh, that was Fatu. Oh, okay, I still I don't Jacob, know. Yeah. I was like, damn, she got. I still don't know if that head. doctor's all right, all right, and I don't know if that doctor knows how to sell. <laughs> you know, maybe not. I don't think she had to sell. She, she, she got laid <laughs> she the fuck out. She a head or a boot. She got laid the fuck out. So now what we have going is now CM Punk has screwed with Drew, which I thought in the in, I don't know if I said this on last week's show. If uh, I thought for a second that CM Punk would like pull up the lever on the Money in the Bank briefcase when Drew was reaching for it, like in a Bugs Bunny fashion. You said that to me. <laughs> that would have been real funny. Uh, but now you have Seth, who is continuously mad at CM Punk for one thing or another for his whole career. So when Seth came out and they started talking, I was like, "These," I was like, "These guys might actually fight," because everyone like, mm-hmm. "Dude, I'm trying to apologize to you. Pay <laughs> yeah. attention." The greatest line, the greatest line in any promo. Cause it's the most CM Punk way to apologize. Hey. Shut up! I'm trying to apologize. And by the way, I don't. Mean it. <laughs> he tried for. He was like, I, I was apologize. Like, but I was like, oh, damn it, punk. Because <laughs> CM Punk was so right, but Seth Rollins was also just like, you just don't know how to be a good person, do you? And Punk's like, why be a good person when you can be right? And I'm like, oh my god. This was like these two are just blowing off steam <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah. So here's. I'm trying to apologize. Here's, here's my big attention. question for you, Kayfabe. Is this leading to a SummerSlam triple threat? I fucking hope not. I de- like actively yeah, want to separate. I, hope not. I desperately like don't want them to do it, but I understand that they're probably concerned that if they don't do a triple threat, it's gonna put the heat off Seth. But I don't think this is the thing. They fucking hate each other in real life. Truly, yeah. This, this is a this is IRL. this is real. Hate. I think, I think you can let the real life hate cook. Oh yeah, they they let it cook on like, raw. As as long as they're professional backstage, yeah. yes. Oh, I'm sure they are, but like, no. I'm sure Seth is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Punk. Punk. I'm sure Punk offered him a Timmy's donut. He probably did. <laughs> Dude, Punk eating the donuts in the press is <laughs> I love how I'm he's, just, I cry. he's running. Every he's time. running with the gimmick every presser. I think they have him on presser. Do you want a donut? Do you also love how Punk was like, by the way, I want to congratulate the Florida Panthers on winning the <laughs> Florida Panthers, like, no one talks about hockey enough. So, congratulations. <laughs> he did it in Toronto. I was like, you dick. <laughs> 
this could lead to a trip down. I don't know. I feel like we're either getting Punk and Drew at Bad Blood or Punk and Seth at Bad Blood. Bad Blood is main eventing with CM Punk. And someone you gotta do punk and you got you gotta do punk and drill yeah because you've been building for that for so long yeah so they are the definition of bad boy oh oh yeah absolutely so I don't know where this Howard is Taylor Swift Seth can be the guest that. <laughs> since we can't get Kendrick and Drake we get we can see him punk and Drew uh but yeah no no no. Taylor Swift has that song "Bad Blood." No, we're, we're not. Remixes Kendrick yeah, on Metro it. Boomin is the sponsor for Bad Blood in Atlanta. We're not getting a Taylor Swift. Bad Bloods. We might get that. Dude, I hope that's the, like the theme song. <laughs> if I can, like this. Bad Blood is brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So to before Dale we move Drizzy. on to the rest of the card, I do want to just point out a great tweet I saw about uh, Drew McIntyre's money in the bank run. Someone said. Uh, we really need to talk more about Drew's money in the bank rain. No bad matches, no bad promos. Yep. End it before it got yep. stale. Put ever, put over young yep. talent. <laughs> yep. All of it. I was like, it's perfect. Drew <laughs> McIntyre, one of the greatest money in the bank title reigns ever. Moving on to 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 Jesus Christ, I the women's money in the bank match. I could almost argue should have main evented. Um, it they <laughs> yeah. went for it. Chelsea Green probably took the most perfect bump I've ever seen somebody falling from a 15, 20 foot ladder on the table. That's that's a great, a great She fell so gracefully. She felt she's she can't wait to hang that up. I, I, I couldn't wait either. <laughs> yeah, Papa. You know, like what a fall. The crowd was so sold on her winning and her and Tiffy and Tiffy came and, and stole it and won the briefcase. And I think the story is now is that Tiffany Stratton's biggest best friend in kayfabe is Nia Jax, who is who? The Queen of the Ring. Mm -hmm. You could surmise, and Nia Jax has a title fight against Bailey at SummerSlam. That is solidified. Yeah, yeah that she's it's winning. It's probably solidified she's winning, because mm -hmm. I think the story is now, you have Nia as champ, Tiffy at, with the money in the bank. The story writes itself from there on out. It's a good, it's a it's good a story. Really good, <laughs> it's a great story. Uh, Tiffy teased... Uh, trying to get a match with Trish Stratus, which I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Uh, she she tried. She's like, I don't really know who she's, you are. She slipped up a little. Yeah, yeah. I'd do it. <laughs> and Trish, she's like, I wasn't a big wrestling yeah. fan. Like, I get what she was trying to say yeah. as a heel, but she didn't do it right. And Trish was like, bitch, you're me. <laughs> That's who you are. <laughs> like, I did, I did yeah. you before you did you. <laughs> I did you when you Pretty were in much. diapers. Pretty much. <laughs> like, uh... So it's gonna be interesting to see what, what uh, where she goes with this. How, but this match was great. V, like Naomi doing a split in between two ladders. <laughs> yeah, that looked really uncomfortable. That could have been really bad. Tiffy really adjusted fast. one of the ladders because Naomi was because the ladder was about to fall, and so Tiffy kind of brought it back at the last second. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea's fall. I was really hell bent on Chelsea winning. Chelsea had the best Canadian gear I've ever seen. Uh, she was uh, Lyra Valkyria. Lyra Valkyria was like hanging, from, hanging upside down from one of the ladders for a while. <laughs> yeah, these women beat the shit out of each other. Michael Cole's like, I can't believe I'm enjoying <laughs> this. <laughs> they came back for commercial. Michael Cole's like, I'm still standing for the last match. <laughs> it's like, that was amazing. They did. They did. They did a really, really the good job. When it's like, I, I when, when it's when it's women's matches versus men's matches and it's the same match, like yeah. War Rumbles. The women do kind of they're bring their a, a game more creative. and really yeah. fucking go they're for it. They're a lot more competitive when they're doing the same match up against the men. And that's kind of what you want to see. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. That's what they should do. It's exactly what yeah. they should do. Um, I, we got to talk about the Mishinoku driver spot. When fucking EO dr did a driver on Zoe Stark onto a ladder. Yeah. EO's, EO selling it was. I don't incredible. know if that was a seller. She was really she hurt. <laughs> She just stayed like that for a I while. I feel like that was real pain. <laughs> I feel like that was real pain. Because uh, she, like, like, I don't know how Zoe's head didn't get stuck in between the rings of the ladder. It was like she went head first. Yeah, she's, she's lucky. so lucky. Yeah. When I watched it again, I think Io was able to turn her head just in time. Before. How did she not have a bruise on her back? Like, she was on Raw the next, like, two nights later, and there was no bruise. No mark, nothing. Makeup? Maybe makeup. Triple H said he's like, Triple H Maybe. said no one got a major injury, which is astonishing when you watch this match over again. He didn't, notice he didn't say injury. Major, he said yeah. a major injury. Yeah. No, yeah. no one died. <laughs> no one's going to the hospital. 
Everyone's did, legally okay. Yeah, was what he meant to say. <laughs> yeah, but did you die? Yeah, but did you die? Tonga Loa exactly. may have got a real injury because how do you botch a low blow? But anywho. <laughs> he got punched in yeah, the that head. Was <laughs> that was so funny. That was but so I think funny. He, I think when because when Tonga Loa took the dive back into the it was yeah, a no, when no, when Tong, when Tongaloa <laughs> took the took the dive, when someone did like a tope suicida, Tongaloa, and he hit the announce table, his head bounced off the announce table. Yeah, like it, it looked real bad. Uh, but Tippy Time's probably going to have a long run with this to make you forget that she has the briefcase. Although I'm interested to see if she actually turns it pink and bedazzles it. That would be cute. Yeah, she is because she told us she yeah, is. She's like, I'm going to make it pink and bedazzle it. So that's first, and then. People were asking a question about what she's going to do. She's like, wait and see. And I'm like, that's not how you answer the question, but whatever. Um, I have a theory. <laughs> you just got to tune in to find out. Oh, media training. <laughs> I, have, I have a theory that she might be the first one to not successfully cash in because they kept making a point about how all the, women, yeah. all the women that have cast in before 100%. have been successful. 100% success so rate. So I feel like Tiffy's not going to succeed. Because she is such a bratty <laughs> character, it would work for her to lose. Yeah. I think it would be, be really good to work for her to lose. Um, but we'll see what happens with it. So Tiffy, Tiffy and Naya is going to be an interesting pair. And let's go on to the show that neither of my hosts watch. NXT Heatwave, which I will argue, if they do watch it, is better overall than money in the bank from match quality ring psychology and also shock finishes uh, nxc heatway was sunday uh, it had a very big takeover feel it was about five matches as well and one pre-show match which was a very good tag team match uh as well um very toronto heavy on nxc heatway a lot of, pretty much more so than money in the bank but we did have probably the biggest shock of the night with is ethan page on a kevin owen style <laughs> nxt run Two matches nice. in two months, and he is now the NXT champion, okay? In one of the craziest fatal four ways you will ever see uh, with a wild, wild finish. So I'll explain to you how the finish went, besides all the other things happened, like Javon Evans being straight, Javon, yeah, Javon Evans being straight out of a freaking video game. Um, 19, year old, 19 year old, he did a top rope Cody Cutter. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> a top rope Cody cutter. Um, he did like a he, he did a oh my I he did like a corkscrew frog splash. It was fucking unbelievable. Um, so what happens is you have ego about to hit I think an ego's edge on Javon Evans, um or whatever. Javon Evans gets knocked out. Trick Williams comes in, hits his running knee on ethan page ethan page falls on javon evans and the rep starts counting and as trick williams tries to try try to break up the count he gets pulled away by sean spears so ethan page gets knocked out falls on an opponent and wins by accident that's crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ethan Page wins by accident. What an ass. By accident. The best thing about Ethan Page, Ethan Page is from is from Canada. I think he's from the Ontario region. Correct me if I'm wrong, Canadians. And he came out in Stars and Stripes. And on the back of his jacket said, Proud resident of the United States. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't it great? After two months in NXT, you're already booked than better than two years of <laughs> AEW. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I tweeted, I was like, imagine fumbling Ethan Page. I was like, this guy's amazing. I mean, I still I still hope he doesn't scream through every single promo he has, because that was his big problem in AEW. Yeah. I liked everything else about Ethan Page, but I'm like, dude, stop yelling at me. Yelling does not mean energy or emotion. Oh, I don't remember his promos at all, so. Yeah. Stony Creek, Stony Creek Ontario, thank you, friends. But yeah, Ethan Page is, by and large, the best heel in NXT overall. He's doing fantastic work. He has now essentially cheated his way to the to the NXT title in a shock finish because we all thought Trick was just running with this. You'll like this too, Will. Trick Williams yeah. came out in Harlem Heat inspired gear, nice. <laughs> and of course, and cool. and oh, yeah. he was like, "Uh huh, I like it." Chucky Ducky Quack Quack. Oh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> 
Shares it. If, if you watch any match from that, watch that. But here's the more interesting thing that happened, which I think you will enjoy, Kay. So, NXT for the first time ever did something that left us more speechless than I think the main event. So, Ethan Page obviously was the end credit. He's raising the, he's raising the, um, <laughs> yes, over everything, throw a grown man like a Tyler. Ethan Page is raising the championship up in the air, very close in on his picture. And then, Kay, the screen goes white. And then, why? Because you tell. because Joe Hendry's face shows up, and then they cut it to black. Wow! <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> it was the beginning of a Joe Hendry video with no audio. They just turned around. It was his face, and then it, did anyone clap? No, they didn't play the music. It was just the visual. Oh! And then and that's how the show ended. So according to all. They, they blue balled us. us. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. They blue balled <laughs> us. So it is highly possible Joe Hendry is going to be sticking around NXT for a while. Have, are you on the Joe Hendry train yet, Will? Do you believe? I, I watched his video and it's very catchy. <laughs> I need to see him and I need to see his act in person or like on TV before I can fully answer that. But I'm going to say you know, yes. You know, you, I you will, know I will what, be. Really, what you'll enjoy about him? His biggest feud right silly. now that uh, his his most noticeable feud, uh, and it, it works great in TNA, is that he gets on Top Dollar's last nerves. Oh, <laughs> I feel like him and James Storm have a great feud. <laughs> Sorry about your <laughs> damn luck. Yeah, so so Joe Hendry, Ethan Page, it's a great match. Let's also talk about this. Kalani Jordan and Sol Ruka, first ever North American title defense. And it, I put it in. I put it in our Discord somewhere, probably in the NXT chat. They did the Osprey and Ricochet sequence, almost like flippy, almost shot for shot. Oh, that's cool! Almost shot for shot. This was a fantastic match. I forget that they're both NCAA premier gymnasts. They both did gymnastics. It was athletic. It was fantastic it was insane i was very scared about how this was going to go because these are two faces on tv but it was just an anything you can do i can do better you want to do flippy shit we'll do flippy shit it was literally an osprey and ricochet um from from the new japan uh from the g1 and even uh kalani jordan won it was the first ever north american title defense in a singles match yeah yeah she won um but again another fucking fantastic match even ricochet was like i know these moves He's like, this, he's like, this looks so familiar to me. <laughs> um, but no, it was that was the second match. It was fucking amazing. We're not going to talk about the Chase U tag match, but that tag match was phenomenal as well. Um, Roxanne and Lola Vice did what they did. Uh, probably the biggest though. But then we have to end with this. Well, I want you to look at this picture right here. Remember I was telling you about Oba Femi? Oh, I've seen him no, in no. person. He's look very Look how high scary. Wesley is in the air. <laughs> ice, ice, I see that. That's 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 scary. <laughs> like, like you know how Chelsea Green was like trying to use the ladder to like poke the briefcase <laughs> yeah. down. This next time, have Oprah Femi throw you like a lawn dart, or, like a javelin. You'll get it. You'll get up. So there, the interesting thing about you. Chelsea Green. You you what I want to see? I want to see how far he can throw hornswoggled on a football field. <laughs> I, solid forty, solid forty yards. Shot put. I want to see him shot put. Forty yards, easy, easy forty. It's far, dude. I, I'll, I'd be. I would not be surprised if he did twenty yards, sixty feet. You could do <laughs> yeah. it. I'm, go, I'm going forty. So this is also in the opening sequence of the match, by the way. <laughs> Jesus, that's in the. Did did Wesley do the on the way down? <laughs> no, he he was spinning in a circle. It was like he did an F10 essentially in the air. <laughs> yeah, me. this opened the show. By the way, absolutely opened the show. Uh, next time is an NXT show. If you guys are all on Discord, I'll hop in and watch it with you guys. Because I think this is going to be way more fun watching with <laughs> NXT is fun watching with, with, with all of us. But yeah, no, they put on a fantastic match. Wesley is apparently pissed because he can't win a North American title. I'm surprised he hasn't been called up yet now that Ricochet's gone. But if we're speaking about uh, speaking about John Cena putting people over on a run, John Cena Obafemi. That would be fun. <laughs> John Cena Oba would be so I'm... fun. <laughs> I don't need it. Do I it was also on a day we talked on Discord about Oba Femi teaming up with Omas as they're both Nigerian and they can be the Nigerian Giants. If if John Cena oh did it on a takeover, I think it's I possible John Cena shows up at NXT. He's never been there before. 
yeah. I think it's highly possible. <laughs> I think if John Cena so too. faces an NXT talent on a takeover, that I think that's worth yeah. doing. I'm also a big fan of Obafemi teaming up with Omos. They're both from Nigeria. They can be the Nigerian Giants as a tag too. Mm, Ob- Obamas. Obamas. <laughs> Obamas. Obamas. <laughs> that would be very, very scary. <laughs> yeah. Managed by MVP. He's just there to talk shit. He can't really do anything. This for, this for no reason called their tag team. is just the flat earthers. It's just just for no people. reason. It's because, yeah, they say flatten people. Everywhere they go, the earth gets flat. <laughs> Pretty much. It's, it'd be fun. But, you know, NXE is a fantastic card. Um, definitely go check it out. Definitely check out that that fatal four-way main event above everything. The tag match, Kalani and Soul. Oba Oba threw a grown man around like he was a toddler. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's scary. Oh, okay, <laughs> it, this it, watch a match of his. He's literally a scary individual. And the crazy part about it is, I will check he's it. not in ring shape yet. You can look at him and be like, you're not in good <laughs> enough shape yet for this. Damn. I know he has he has a tongue yeah. on. <laughs> It's, it's, it's bizarre, so really. It's so scary, but I'm so excited for him. So excited for him. And whatever happened on NXT, which I'll have especially have to watch uh, at some time uh, this weekend. Uh, but yes, folks, that concludes our show today. KOTR Live, Tuesdays, 8 Eastern. Thank you guys for joining us as K plays with Boris, our CM Pop. I will tell you this, K. I did notice, I did see somebody online dress up their Corgi in a Cody Rhodes-inspired gear. So many people are sending that, that to me. I saw that. That was we're thinking about. Doing, I, I love corgis. We're thinking about doing a wrestling costume for him for Halloween. We're not sure yet. CM Pup. That is true. <laughs> I do. He can fit in my old CM Pup shirts a little bit. There you go. There you go. It works out. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Anywho, anybody got any final words for this week on the show? Go solo, Sakoa. <laughs> I acknowledge you, my tribal chief, my brand new tribal chief. Okay, any final words about your anything, any news you broke today? Um, be awesome. <laughs> well, very excited to be in my engaged era. Very excited to announce Frank Tortellini's a girl. <laughs> and <laughs> my kicked in. So it's over for me. It is over for you. I, I will say if if John Cena is going to be John Cena is definitely coming back to New York, we might have to go. Oh no! Yes, I'll pull them. Like, I understand that we need to save money for a wedding, but we have to go see John Cena because <laughs> you've never seen John Cena in person, dude. You know he's going to do one last MSG oh, show. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was saying. Well, you got to come out as the biggest John Cena. I want you in George and the whole gear. Yeah, honestly, if I'll do it, I'll I'll do I'll do the jorts. I'll buy I'll, I'll I'm buy gonna it. buy a pair of jorts. So I'm not cutting. Off my head, I'm gonna I'll buy the jorts. I'll buy the red. I'll do the sweatpants. I'll buy, I'll do the whole gimmick. Get up. I'll even get his haircut. <laughs> like should I do like the the, the marine oh, haircut? God. Oh no! And before and before you before you like once you pay, make it past metal detectors, you like flash the towel and run and throw it to you, while you throw it to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's gonna run, run to the concession stand. <laughs> I'll have a of beer. <laughs> you can't, you can't see. Me. That'll be thirty. That'll be thirty-three dollars. Oh yeah, you can't see me. <laughs> oh my god, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. I actually, I actually do have a talking point. For the oh, we can talk show. about that real quick. Yeah. Actually, I have two, two. very interesting stuff. So. One wrestling related, one absolutely not. All right, so related. we'll get to that. So uh, we'll, on you, on you, Ben. Well, let's, let's start going to the best show. All right, where's Where is my it? music? Here it is. Do you know people still use Facebook Messenger? Because I just got a message from somebody on Facebook. It's very interesting. I oh, do. Well, I do. I have a few group chats in there. Oh, well, all right. 
It's with no one under the age of like three, <laughs> Color me I intrigued. Uh, so I have to get to that at some point. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 383. The time is all legal as, e- as Ethan Page shocked the world by winning the NXT title and starting his career off to a hot start in WWE, while John Cena also shocked the world by saying Boris. his WWE run is coming to an end at the end of 2025. I have been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me in Ambassador Biggs. Of course, all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find King KOTR upon KOTR uh, Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Discord links to all of that are in the description below if you're listening to us make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Attic Radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast follow Wrestle Attic Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Attic Radio all one word everywhere else on the socials Will Tarashock Yo, join our Discord. Our Discord is so much fun. Um, I, I'm sorry I didn't join the NXT Heat Wave, but next time, if I am home, I definitely will. Because our Discord's yeah. not fun. I am Cheeseburger Daffy, in case anyone's <laughs> wondering. Um, so that is me. It is a rip of Daffy Duck and Cheeseburger <laughs> Eddie from uh, The Longest Yard. Fair enough, fair enough. Hey, Murphy, you're just, you're just kayfabe, right? On yeah, Discord? I think so. Yeah, the newly engaged kayfabe. Yeah. That's crazy. Let me, let me go to it. I fucked you. I, I love Discord. It is like my favorite app. Discord ever. is so great. Yeah, you are. Go well, well, spring that out. Yeah, yeah, K-Fabe, anything, anything, anything for the crowd. Um, nothing new. Um, besides all my wonderful announcements from before, you can find me on Instagram at kfabe k underscore fabe. Um, Boris is begging for my attention, so I am dipping at the post show. And yeah. So sorry I'm missing the post show, but he's literally at, all good yeah. pay. Take care of your dog yeah, child. Yeah. yeah. And, and your and and your pregnant lizard at this point. Well, my pregnant lizard is dragon. Dragon, 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 uh-uh, dragon, dragon. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. When we come back next week, folks. If we come back next week, because you're a good yeah, old dragon. We, we may or may not come. <laughs> We may or may not be back next week because EA Sports College Football is coming up for the first time in 10 years, and that might take up a whole lot of my time. So until you... And I yeah. respect and that. Then... <laughs> yeah. You know what the following week is? Wait, wait, wait. I do have one more announcement. What? What? What do you got? July 22nd, Boris turns one year old. Oh, shit. You might have to do something for so, Boris. You know who we're so not what? doing something for? is slack wow. which is ironic because i think it's his oh, birthday wait, today birthday. <laughs> so, fuck you. Birthday. so fuck you wait, yes. really? yes. wait, let me go to facebook I'm, go I'm, go no, check right saw, now no because i remember seeing wait, mr fett on facebook being like click clack happy birthday slack and i think that was today <laughs> yeah so from all of us from the bottom of our hearts uh slack go fuck yourself we'll see you next week Hold on, let me write on Slack. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.